I believe very strongly that science is political. And oftentimes people tell me, you're a scientist, stay in your lane, don't worry about the political ramifications of that science, you should be completely objective. But I'm not just a scientist, I'm also a woman, and I can't divorce those two identities in my approach to science or in my approach to the public. All of our society and our civilization really is, is wrapped around this, this very short-term thinking, and yet the, the decisions that we make have very long-term consequences. As paleoecologists, we look at climate change and species responses over hundreds to thousands to millions of years. We really want to understand how species will respond to climate change in the future. The last hundred years or hundred thousand years are relevant to the future of our civilization. Wood and all these leaves, it doesn't look decomposed because it's not, it's not rotting, it's just trapped here in the bottom of the bog. And if the climate was to warm and this was to dry up, you'd have 10 to 15,000 years worth of trapped carbon suddenly emptied into the atmosphere all at once. This is a really hard time to be a scientist. I'm basically doing work that most of the people in the highest levels of government don't even believe is real. You have people who don't believe in climate change who are making decisions about the future of our planet that directly contradict what I see in front of me in the lab every day. This is the 1947 map of your hometown. Wow. Yeah. It is. Yeah, isn't that amazing? I grew up in a Navy household. When my dad retired from the Navy, he worked in a steel mill for many years and then was in a coal-fired power plant. And I went on to become an environmental scientist. Having a conservative dad has actually challenged me to become a better activist and a better advocate for climate change. Hello, and welcome to Warm Regards, a dialogue between the scientists, journalists, news I'm very active on Twitter. I co-host a podcast on climate change called Warm Regards. Those tools are so powerful because they create direct connections between me and the public. Aloha. Thank you so very much for your work and your research. This election was very tough. Your first podcast after the election, sorry, really resonated with me and gave me the strength to continue on. The people who are the most loud are usually the ones that are trying to get us to be quiet. And it's really rare to hear from people who value your voice and the work that you do. Sometimes it feels like it's invisible. Um, so it's really nice to know when it matters. <laughs> Giving people more facts is not the way to change their behavior. It's really about building empathy and connections. Loving my dad and listening to him has given me the opportunity to understand a bit more where he's coming from. We have to fight for public science. I can't slow down, and I can't be quiet, and I can't give way. We are all stakeholders in the war on science, and we all stand to lose if science is censored. Science is political, but it need not be divisive. There has been a long history of both parties coming together to support the environment. We've done it in the past, we can do it again.